but that lineup with Soto and Judge, that is one that is arguably the best one two punch in baseball. And it's certainly the best one two punch in I'll, I'll say the American League, mm -hmm. and I do think it, it rivals what the Dodgers are doing out there with any way you want to word their one-two punch, whether you go Mookie Otani or Otani Freeman. This rivals that. Fly ball, onto the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! A game, what a moment. It is opening week, my friends. We have made it. It's here. Today is Tuesday, meaning we're going to do our American League preview today. We're going to do National League preview tomorrow. And then Thursday is opening day. And on that day, we'll have award predictions, our full breakdown of our bracket from every team that's going to be in the playoffs all the way to our World Series champion. So this is a big week, obviously because it is opening week, but a big week for Flippin' Bats as well. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today, Alex, is our American League preview show. Uh, I'm pumped for these. I love these every year because basically it just means we're right around the corner. It's right here. And we're both going to... Uh, not, I'm going to opening day. You're going the day after opening, opening night, day. Opening we'll call it. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm going opening <laughs> day. You're going opening day. I like that, yeah. see? Find the positives in everything that you do, Ben. Thank you, Because that's Alex. what we do here on Flipping Bats. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm excited. It's here. Like, it, last week was our little teaser, obviously, with the Soul Series. Incredible, just the expansion of the game. We broke all of that down. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out, because yeah. why not? But now, it's here. Every single team this week is getting their season started. So we're getting you ready for the start of the season by previewing the American League today. Do you know what came out yesterday by chance? Did you ever watch Breaking Bad? Did you watch Breaking Bad? It's the first show I ever binge watched. I love The first show I ever binge watched. Yeah. That's what I learned what binging was. Yeah. So yeah. years ago, whenever it came out, and I was just thinking about this. Did Breaking Bad, did they release everything all at once? I don't remember it being like a week. It was week by week, I'm hearing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. remember. I think my dad and I So you came it. late. I must you came have, late to the party. I must have. Because it came out, I remember, the year that Mike Trout won Rookie of the Year because I left my husband in San Francisco to fly to Millville, New Jersey <laughs> to do a behind the scenes, and he stayed and binged the whole first season of Breaking Bad. That's why I know when yeah. it came out. So my dad and I binged it. Anyway, this whole yeah. story <laughs> is because <laughs> Walter White Ryan yes. Cranston, Heisenberg, whatever you want to call him, was on Flipping Bats on Monday. We talked all about baseball. He did the um, the opening, like he did it last year, like yeah. that video that Major League Baseball puts out to get you pumped for the season. He did it again this year. Uh, had him on Monday to talk all about filming that uh, and really his love of baseball. He is a massive, massive baseball fan, and it was Dodgers really fan. cool. Dodgers fan, baseball past Dodgers, yeah. um, just everything we could have possibly talked about and a little bit about Breaking Bad. So it was really cool. That's so um, cool. But before we get to this American League preview, please make sure you all are subscribed, following wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, and follow us on TikTok. We are getting close to 100,000 followers Ooh. there, which is a goal of ours. And uh, we'll, maybe we'll do something Thank cool Thank you for being on the there. journey with so us. Follow us on TikTok. And now let's talk American League today. Yeah, and we're going to start on the West, okay? Let's get yeah. started in the AL West. But before we dive into this season's predictions, let's quickly take a look at how things ended up last year because the AL West was one of the most exciting races yeah. down to the wire. It came down to the very last game of the regular season. Astros Rangers ended up with the same record, but it was the Astros who went on to win the AL West. Yeah, I think the American League West last year was definitely the most exciting yes. finish because there were three teams involved until yeah. the very last Yeah, day. Mariners were into last it until... The oh, yeah, they only finished two games back. Yeah. Um, so this is last year. Uh, so what we're going to do today, once we talk about the 2023 standings, is basically reveal every team and every standing and, and where they're going to be this year. So from five up to one, obviously starting in the West where the Astros took it last year, same record as the Rangers, Won the tiebreaker there. Do you remember how crazy that was? It was the, so because the, they played they each other, right? They held the tiebreaker right? over it, each other. Well, the three so. of them like played each other the, the last, last like, two series of the season. Of the like yeah. it was this that this is exactly what you want to see down the stretch in Major League Baseball, yeah. especially with 162 games. A lot of the time, it's already set. Like okay, these teams are going to the yeah. postseason. These guys are out, but to have three teams fighting for a chance to make it into the playoffs was. 
So Chef's the third kiss. place team Incredible. only finished. Yeah, the third place yeah. team only finished two games back. Even the fifth place team in the division only finished forty games back uh, in the Oakland days. So <laughs> may, maybe they'll like, be even closer this back. year. <laughs> Who knows? But we'll talk all about it with this year's uh, 2024 American League West standings. And Alex, yep, this one's going to come <laughs> as no surprise to you. Yeah. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. Okay. We'll start with number five. For 2024, I am going to go yeah. with the Oakland A's. Ooh, but you have them winning five more games than they did last year. Yes. That's big. And only finishing 38 games back, which improvement. Yeah, um, look, yeah. I mean, not, baby steps here. We're going to be done They're talking hot about the A's. I, <laughs> yeah. The A's are frustrating. It's over. Done. A's are coming in last. Okay, who do you have coming in fourth in the AL West. Fourth place in the American League West. I'm going to go with the Angels, yeah. okay? Now, here's what I want to say. I, I don't think the Angels are going to be as bad as everyone thinks. I really don't. They lost Shohei Otani. Mm -hmm. I do think, hopefully, I think if we can get a full healthy season of Mike Trout, he's that's still it. an MVP type yeah, player. That's it. If Mike Trout really can do. stay healthy, we're talking about a different team here, but we haven't had that in the last, what, five years? A full, yeah. healthy season of Well, Mike they Trout. need Mike Trout and if Anthony they Rendon. lose oh, Shohei. So yeah. if Mike Trout's going to be healthy, that's still not enough. They need Rendon to be healthy. Yeah. They need pitching to step up. I have them finishing 77 and 85, 16 games out of first place. Uh, Angels, fourth place in my opinion. Okay, who do you have at three? All right, now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here yeah. in the American League West. At number three. Okay, I am going to go with the Mariners. Ah, huh. okay. With a record of 90 and 72. I Very good record. I have them finishing three games back. I like the Mariners this year. I'm wearing their shirt. Yep. Fun differential. You remember all that? I think it was two years ago. They didn't care about run differential. That was the whole talk. What's The Mariners aren't even that good. Their run differential stinks, but they're just winning games. They're getting lucky. And Scott Service came out and was like, we don't care about run differential. We care about fun differential. And I do think they're <laughs> going to be like, a good team this I need year. that shirt immediately. I think the... <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> absolutely. That, that is the motto to my life. Look, it's their rotation for me. Do I love their offense? I don't love their offense, but I think their pitching is going to keep them in every single game. Yeah. You got Castillo. You got Gilbert. You got Kirby. You got Miller. You got Wu that I think is going to be good for them this year. So literally one through five in this rotation, mm -hmm. you're going to be in... Most every single game every night. Is yeah. there, are they going to have some stinkers? Sure. Absolutely. That's baseball. But I do think their rotation is good enough to do damaging and, and do well in the American League West and potentially even further, but we'll get to that later. Okay, yeah. So our top two teams. Who's finishing second? Who's at first between the two Texas teams? Yes. So, again, the ALCS from 2023. Yeah. I still have them both at the top of this division. But in second place, I am going to go with the Rangers. At 90 and 72. If you're keeping track, which I hope you all are, because this was literally two minutes ago. That's the same exact record exact same. as I have the Mariners. So I have them tied with the, the Rangers taking the, the tiebreaker and technically finishing in second place. The Rangers coming off their World Series victory, their offense is going to be really, really good. Yeah. Pitching concerns for a good chunk of the year, obviously. Jordan Montgomery, by the way, still not signed. We are two days that away so from opening day. He is a and World Series champion who did a great job throughout the entire playoff stretch. Oh, they don't win the World Series without Jordan. No, Brown. not at they all. really don't. How and is then, he not on a team yet? So you have that uh, missing from the rotation. Scherzer missing from the rotation due to injury. Jacob deGrom mm -hmm. missing from the rotation due to yeah. injury. Who Look, every time I hear, all right, deGrom due to come back uh, late in the season, second half, hopefully, I, unfortunately, as a baseball fan, have given up hope when I hear that, when it comes to DeGrom. I hope he comes back and has a dominant second half. But when I hear DeGrom is due back in the second half, my mind, unfortunately, goes to, okay, is he actually going to come back then? And if he does, is he going to throw more than two starts for the team before he gets hurt again? And again, that's me being hypercritical of the situation. He's one of the best, most dominant pitchers to ever pitch in Major League Baseball. It just is so unfortunate what has been happening to him over the last couple of years. And I hope, again, that he does come back and we see the Rangers in the playoffs and Jacob deGrom's out on the mound dominating. Because think of deGrom, deGrom, Scherzer, Ivaldi. I mean, it'd be incredible. That's unbelievable. It would be but incredible. as of right now, I do not feel as good about them and their pitching. John Gray in that rotation, Ivaldi's, you know, a bit older, but did well in the playoffs. So we'll see. 
Often, offense will be great. Pitching has some concerns. Back into the bullpen is a, is a concern for me as well. I mean, but the team that you have at number one now, they also have some pitching concerns yes. to start the season. Yes, for a little bit less of time. And that's part of the reason okay. I have the Astros winning this division at 93 and 69. Offense is, again, going to be elite. Everybody's back. The offense is going to be great. There are no concerns with the offense. Where there are concerns is the starting rotation. Framber will be starting the year um, for the Astros. He'll be starting opening day because Justin is hurt. Mm-hmm. Justin is expected back in April. At some point, he will be back. I, you know, I, It's not going to be too long. So you're going to get the ace of the staff back early, early, early on in the season. Then you have Justin, Framber, Hunter Brown in a rotation, and all of a sudden it starts looking pretty good. But there still are some depth questions. Is J.P. France going to be good at the back end? Can he be as uh, as worth as as helpful as he was last year? Urquidy with his elbow. When are you going to get him back? Lance McCullers, same sort of thing there. Um, Luis Garcia, same sort of thing. So these are all guys later in the year. But the big one for me is that Justin's just a little bit delayed. It's Mm -hmm. not this injury that we're talking about with a lot of other people in terms of the Rangers and and Scherzer and and DeGrom. It's just he was delayed to get the year started, and hopefully he's back really, really soon. Big, The big difference for me, Alex, with these two teams at the top, Uh I love both of their offense. And if you were to make me choose this division based off of offense, it's different. But it takes good offense. It takes good starting pitching, which I think the Astros – We'll have a little bit leg up once Justin comes back, and it takes a good back into the bullpen. And the Houston Astros have one of the best, if not the best, back into the bullpen in all of baseball, adding Josh Hader. And the Rangers still just have question marks to me back there. You lose Araldis Chapman, mm-hmm. you add David Robertson, LeClerc is kind of hit or miss. So question marks there, not for the Astros. I'm going to take the Astros to win the division once again. Okay. So you have Astros winning. Do you have any other teams getting in through the wild card. Yes. So I think the Oakland A's are going to be able to just miss the playoffs. I am actually going to take, Uh huh. we'll go division by division here in yeah. the show, but two of my three wild card teams in the American League are going to come from this division. I do okay. think the Mariners and the Rangers both make the playoffs. Astros obviously make the playoffs winning the division for me. Alex, I'm curious. Yeah. These are my AL West picks. Who would uh-huh. you, do you agree with my division winner? Who do, who do you have to win the West? So, I also have three teams from the AOS making it to the postseason. Okay. However, I have a different team winning the AOS. Okay. I have the Mariners coming out on top here. Why, you ask? Well, you just went through all of the pitching injuries that both the Astros and the Rangers are facing right now. Yes, we don't know how, we have an idea of the timeline of how long some of these guys are going to be out. But these are your your top ace guys that you go in and you hope that when they're on the mound, they're getting you wins. So not only not only do the Mariners, I think, have the strongest pitching rotation in the AL West right now, they are the healthiest. On top of the pitching, I believe that this finally feels like Julio's year yeah. to go off. Okay? I mean, this is his third season. He's He's been on that path to greatness, right? His first season, rookie season, was unbelievable. Last year, a little bit of a tale of two different seasons. Sure. First half of the season, he only had a 721 OPS, but then the second half of the season, 941. And he kind of really mm. went off at the All-Star game in his home run derby at home. He just had, he has these moments of greatness. And he is the face of that franchise with the pitching staff that they have. I feel like it is his time to really get to that next level. So I have the Mariners winning the AOS and the Astros and the Rangers being my wild card teams. Terrible pick. I'm just kidding. I have them three games back. Yeah. I'm high on the Mariners this yeah. year for every every reason I said, every reason she said. I, I know, um, say what you will about projection, projections and win totals and all of that. I, the Mariners are one of the teams that I believe goes over their projected win total. Yeah. And for me, it's all, about, it's all about pitching. Do these other two teams have a better... A better offense? Absolutely. They really do. The Astros and Rangers lineups are some of the best in baseball. But give me 162 games right? with a rotation one through five that has uh-huh. a ton of depth. This, this Mariners team is going to do some damage this year. Yeah. They're just in a really challenging division. They are. But I could see, I could see any three have, of these teams winning. I really could. They have some big names that are 
starting the season on the IL. Yeah. And that you got to take advantage of that right out of the gates. You got to, we've seen this. Teams that like have a slow start, you're like, that's okay, 162. Then you get to the end, you're like, hmm, maybe if I just won one, two, three more of those games in the beginning of the season, this is the Mariners' time to come out of the gate strong and get a hefty lead in AL West. If, if the Astros, if you were to tell me that the Astros rotation is going to look like it does on opening day for 162 yeah. games, I'm not, I'm not taking them yeah. to win the division. But I do know that Justin will be back fairly shortly. And I do insider think that information. rotation, that's not even really insider <laughs> information, but I, I do Family know he will be back soon. Okay. Um, and I do think that rotation looks different a month into the year than it will at the end of the year. And Alex, mm-hmm. my last point here in the West, look, it's as simple as this. We can talk about 26 players on that roster all we want, but until somebody proves, and I know the Rangers just won the World Series, Dick. but until somebody proves that over the course of 162, that they're going to take the division from the Astros, I will. The Astros are still just as good. It's their division to lose. Once again, when the Mariners one day prove that they can wake up and be better than the Astros over that, the course of 162 games, then maybe I'll pick them. But as for both teams being, in my opinion, both really, really good and both playoff teams, to win the division, if it comes down to one series at the end of the year, mano y mano, Astros versus Mariners, I'm taking the Astros. That's also your team. One of your teams. Well, I have like yeah, I have like you have an emotional teams. connection to it. I get it. That's fair, and that's okay. Yeah, but when was the last time? I, when was the last time the Astros lost the AL West? Don't know. Exactly. Memory doesn't memory doesn't go back that far. <laughs> All right, let's move on <laughs> to the AL Central. Little different story here in the AL Central. Let's take a look back at how they did last season in 2023. Not a super strong division. Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd say. All right, 2023 Ugh. stats are in the wall. You got the Royals in fifth last year, the White Sox coming in in fourth last year. Just really bad teams, really yeah. bad teams. The Guardians also not very good. The Tigers also not very good. The Twins, pretty good baseball team. So this division last year really did stink. Five through two, and that hurts me to say because yeah. the Tigers are also, as you just mentioned with Julio, Kind of a tale of two halves. The mm-hmm. Astro, or the the Tigers for a couple of years have done the same thing. They get they get out of the gates so slow, mm-hmm. and it's every year I get tired of this with the Tigers. Every year it's all right. They're close, maybe still a year or two away. I am tired for the fifth year in a row. The Tigers being a year or two away. Yeah. It's so frustrating, and they keep getting off to these slow starts that by the time they start playing good baseball, it's almost too late, even in a bad division. So the Tigers finished second, even though they were under 500 last year, and the Twins came in first at 87 and 75. All right, well, let's move on to the 2024 predictions. Who do you think is coming in fifth place in the AL Central? This one's easy for me. Maybe not as easy as the AL West, but pretty Mm. easy. I'm going to go with the White Sox. And after you trade away Dylan Cease, Mm -hmm. You, there's just nothing. Your opening day starter is Garrett Crochet, which is like an experiment yeah. for a star, as a starter. He's been a reliever. He's been a starter. It didn't go well. He's been injured, then back to the bullpen. And now it's opening day, and you're a White Sox fan. And who's on the mound? Garrett Crochet? All right. So they still have guys. They can hit. Luis Roberts, an MVP-type player, um, he really is that good. I don't just throw that around. They have guys that can play. But it's just been, from top to bottom in that organization, an absolute mess. I have the White Sox in last place this year. Yeah, until they get their culture right, because there was that article that came out last season that kind of gave us an inside look, pulling back the curtain to the organization. Yeah. That's, that's where you need to start to fix things if you want to turn your franchise around. Okay. If you're looking for a silver lining, yep. 63 and 99, they don't lose 100 games. Okay. Just under. So they win two more games than they did last year. Absolutely. Okay. Who do you have coming in at number four? Uh, (laughs) All right. At number four, I have the Cleveland Guardians at 76 and 86. I just, I, the Guardians are frustrating to me because they got to that point. They were a playoff team, the youngest playoff team, youngest playoff team in all of baseball. Yeah. And then they just don't really add around it. Um, They they never really seem to go spend on that big free agent. And in my opinion, to win in the game of baseball right now, you need to have that young, homegrown talent come up, mm-hmm. produce, which they had that, and then add around it. Add some big free agents here or there. And they just 
haven't really. So yeah. I'm excited for a couple things with this Guardians team. Tristan McKenzie, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully back and healthy, yep. I think can have a, a good year. Really good. He was phenomenal in, when, when he was healthy. Uh, Bieber has looked good. I know he's dealt with some injuries. He's going to be back at the top of the rotation and looks good. So uh, Jose Ramirez, third base, yeah. perennial MVP type player. My third baseman on my fantasy team. So excited about <laughs> him. Uh, so there are some things to, to watch and be happy about if you're the Guardians, but I don't think they're going to be very good. I, it's just, it feels like they had the potential and they have pieces in place. But again, guys got to stay healthy yeah. and they got to produce. And you got to go out and get a big veteran to come in too as well. Like that, like we just saw the Orioles do, which we'll get to in a bit. Okay, let's move on. Who do you have at number three? All right, at three, I have up from fifth place, the Royals. Nobody did more in terms of yeah. signing free agents than the Royals did. Yeah. The Kansas City Royals signed the most free agents this offseason. Seth Lugo, uh, to, to, they completely changed around their rotation. Um, really, from, from top to bottom, they changed their rotation. Then in the outfield, you had uh, Dozier out there. And, and just, uh, just a lot, or I believe Renfro. Was it Renfro? Regardless, yes, Hunter Renfro. Add him to the outfield. Another full season of Bobby Witt, who I think we could be talking top three. And MVP Ooh. this year. I think he's going to be that good. The guy's got Pasquantino healthy, mm -hmm. pride of Old Dominion University, by the way. Shout out Vinny, Vinny P. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully he's healthy over at first base. They just have, look, do I think they're going to be a great team? Do I think they're going to be a playoff team? No. I have them at 77 and 85. But we're talking about a team last year that lost over 100 games. Yeah. We're talking a team that is going out, making moves, putting a productive team on the field announcing plans for a new stadium and surroundings. There's just good things happening. Yeah. On top of that, and on top of their rotation, Cole Reagans, who I have as a, a breakout pitcher for 2024, was arguably the best pitcher in the second half last year. Uh, so we get to see him throw 98 to 100 from the left side. A lot of positives for this Royals team. A lot of positives heading in the right direction. I like them. I do. Do I think they're a playoff team? No, but I have them in third in this division. But they're doing what you need to do to get better. Yes. They went in. They put in the work this offseason. As you just said, one of the teams that put in the most work yeah. this offseason to try to get better. So fans should be excited because they're trying. Yep. Okay. Top two. Who do you got at number two? All right. At number two, I have the Tigers. Okay. Again, I think we, ha I think we take a small step forward. We as in the Tigers as in like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The Tigers will always be. Your family. Away. Okay. Yeah. Um. I do think there's a small step forward taken, but I'm, I, I feel like I'm with most Tigers fans out there. I'm tired of the small steps forward. Yeah, take that You big look step. at this rotation that has Tarek Skubal in it, who I think is going to win a Cy Young Award someday and could be in contention this year. You have all of these really young arms that you've been hearing about forever. Mm -hmm. Skubal, Mize, Manning. Jack Flaherty's now in that rotation who, by the way, fantastic spring training. Mm -hmm. I mean, watch out. The guy's throwing hard again. Let's not forget, Jack Flaherty just a few years ago was one of the best pitchers in baseball. And due to injuries and uh, some things popping up and shoulder and all that, he sat right, he was in studio talking about it uh, right before he left for spring training. He feels good. He's ready to roll. And spring training, he's been unbelievable. So you had him into that rotation. Maeda, their starting rotation is going to be great. I really like Riley Green in the offense. Hopefully Torkelson can take another step forward. The big problem to me is their offense. We, and you know it's the problem. And they just never seem to go out and add that big-time free agent. And the one time they did, they went and spent a ton of money on Javi Baez, and the dude can't hit over his weight in spring training. Half his weight in spring training. He's hitting <laughs> .095. Javi Baez weighs more than 180 pounds. He's not hitting half yeah. of his weight in spring training. It's a funny way to put it. It's, it's, it's frustrating. Un, it, it is. Yeah, it is. it's frustrating. It's unacceptable, honestly. And I know, I know he's trying, but at a certain point, you just got to cut your losses and say, hey, we messed up here. I know we were in contention to pay Carlos Correa all that money, but we diverted a little bit and went to Javi Baez. And I know Correa hasn't been great either, but yep. certainly, certainly better than, than Javi Baez. And it just doesn't seem... Like, the writing's on the wall with every, the, the rotation, mm. your guys in the offense that you like, but they just don't go out and add the bats that I would really like to see them add. And I think it's going to make them 
a 500 team this year. I okay. think they go 81 and 81 and finish in second place. Okay, so same spot they finished last year, meaning you have Carlos Correa and the Twins finishing first in the AL Central. Yeah, I don't think this is really all that surprising. The Twins are the best team in the division. Hands like down. you look at the roster, Hands down. their rotation with Pablo Lopez, who yeah. just came on the show, Pablo is going to be great. You got Joe Ryan in that rotation. They did lose Sonny Gray, who had a really good year last year. But offensively, they have the best offense in the division. It's really no, like, I have the Tigers six games back, but the Twins are a good baseball team. And there's not a lot of good baseball being played in the American League Central. No. I think the Twins win the division again in 2024. Any wild card teams from this division? No. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Alex, who do you, who do you have winning this division? Same. This, yeah. was, this was an easy hands-down Twins are the best team in the AL Central. Not a ton of competition. Carlos Correa, if he can stay healthy and start to play like he does towards the end of the year in the playoff push when he just kind of becomes this different yeah. player, he needs to figure out a way to do that for 162. And to your point, like, he has before. Let's yes. not just discredit so get last back, year. Get back to that, last Carlos Correa. Last year wasn't a good year for him. No. Let's not just discredit everything that Correa has done in his career in regular seasons and assume he's going to have another year similar to last year. Carlos Correa was one of the best shortstops in the game of baseball and had a bad year last year. If he can be October Carlos Correa for, for 162 yeah. or 140, yeah. like you'll take that if you're the Twins and you're going to be a really good ball club. All right, let's wrap things up in the AL East. Now, I think we thought this was going to be the most competitive division last season. Yeah. <laughs> Neither of us predicted what happened in 2023, but boy, was it exciting to see Baltimore just come to life and win the AL East. Did we see it coming? No. Was I hopeful? Yes. Yeah. To see them win 101 games last year was awesome. The Orioles won the division, won the number one seed in the American League. Fifth place was the Boston Red Sox at 78 and 84. Let's not forget, last year, the New York Yankees came in fourth place, second to last in the AL East at 82 and 80, 19 games out of first place. Yikes. The Blue Jays at 89 and 73. The Rays almost won 100 games. They won 99 games last year, finished two games back after starting the season by winning for like three it, weeks straight. It was an <laughs> it was insane start to the season, which is why if you come out of the gates hot, this is going to help you for the remainder of the season. And that's really what happened with Tampa Bay. And then the O's. Uh, last year was the year that the O's, all of that potential that was yeah. talked about, put it all together and showed what they can be and potentially what they can be in 2024. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it. Okay, so let's get to the 2024 Predictions, starting at the bottom, who's coming in fifth place? So, in fifth place is a team that mm. um, has had a lot of hype coming into this offseason. What are they going to do? <laughs> Where are they going to add? Oh, my God, Netflix is coming to, to watch this team, and we're going to get, like, a Hard Knocks version of... of the documentary of, of the offseason? For the Red Spring Sox? Spring training, the regular season? Well, guess what they did? They added Lucas Nothing. Giolito... I love Lucas Giolito. Guess what happened to Lucas Giolito? He's not going to pitch this year. Yeah. So, really, the one acquisition you made, and I know they did get Tyler O'Neill as well, and I, I, can, I can see Tyler O'Neill having a good year, but it's not going to be enough. Mm -mm. And it's honestly embarrassing, the offseason that the Red Sox have had. It's embarrassing the last couple of years the Red Sox have had. It's embarrassing that the Red Sox let Mookie Betts go. How far Yikes. back do we want to go? Yikes. The Red Sox have been an embarrassment or, of an organization since yep. they let Mookie Betts walk out of the door because they didn't want to pay him. And then the same thing happened to Xander Bogarts. Well, we'll pay you this. No, Xander says, I want this. And then he hits free agency, and the Red Sox say, okay, well, we'll pay what you originally wanted. And then it's like, well, no, now I'm getting this out there. Yeah. So they're just always a step behind everyone. You let Mookie walk. Mm. You let Xander walk. You finally end up paying Devers. But now who's around him? Yeah. You had a potential to have Mookie Betts, Xander Bogarts, and Rafi Devers in your lineup for Crazy. the rest of eternity. And you had a chance to make this Netflix documentary awesome mm -hmm. because they're going to be a playoff team that could potentially win a World Series. Now this Netflix documentary is going to be awesome because we get to see the inner workings of baseball and we're going to laugh at how much they stink. That's what's going to happen. The Red Sox <laughs> are going to stink, and it's frustrating. I want to see Fenway Park 
in October. It's one of the best atmospheres you could find in October, but we're not going to see it. The only thing happening at Fenway Park in October is probably going to be some top golf setup they have up there on top of the stadium. They're going to stink. They're in fifth. Someone's feeling a little spicy. Yeah. Okay, who you got coming in at number four in the AL East? Number four, I got the Blue Jays. I think yeah. the Blue Jays are going to be a good team. Again, yeah. this division's going to be really good. Yeah. I have the Blue Jays at 85 and 77, 12 games out of first place. I really like their rotation. Um, That's Blue worse Jays, than last year. I was, yeah. I, I was on a, um, I, I went on a radio show in, in Toronto a, a week or so ago. Okay. And they asked me a bunch of questions about this team. And what I decided and where I landed on is that the Blue Jays, with all the potential they have, right? That yeah. rotation that's really good. And ever since, like, Bo and Vladdy came up together, it's like, mm -hmm. that's going to be your core yeah. for a long time to come. And Bo's great. Vladdy's been really, really good that, mm -hmm. that year, but then just good after that. But other than that, they, they haven't the, – the additions around them have been frustrating. This yeah. offseason, it was Justin Turner, who I think is a good, a good player, but I don't think he's an organizational turnaround player. Mm -hmm. Like, guess what? They were in on Shohei Otani, and to the last day, it was, wait a second, wait a second here, <laughs> Shohei's on a plane to Toronto. That didn't end up being true, yeah. but there was all the hype that Shohei goes there, and they were in the run. They had all the money to do it. Where's that money going? Is it going to Justin Turner? No. Is it going to Isaiah Kiner-Falefa? No. Where is that money going that you were willing to go all in with your team and all in on Shohei Otani? What did you pivot to with a team that's ready to win? Nothing. And that's why I think they're a good, not a great team, and that doesn't cut it in the American League East. It just doesn't. No. Nope. All right, but you got it number three. All right, moving on to number three in this division, I have the Tampa Bay Rays, and I'm probably going to be wrong. Why? Because the Rays, every single year, come in win. with a roster that you just think, this year, like, how are they going to do it? Yeah. I don't know. I but don't they know do how it. they're going to do it, which is why I do have them in third place. Okay. I do agree with that. Obviously, it's my standings. That's where I have them. But I do think they win 89 games. I think they go 89 and 73, and they're once, a good, once again a good ball team. But I just don't – that rotation, so many question marks. McClanahan's not pitching mm -hmm. this year, which he's the best lefty in, in baseball when he's healthy. You got Rasmussen coming back from TJ, Springs coming back from TJ, Boz coming back hopefully in May. So, so many rotation question marks, which yeah. if, you're a, if you're a team and you're a fan of a team and you hear so many rotation question marks, it's typically a bad thing. But the Rays are probably the team that the rotation means the least to them because of how they use their, their bullpen and all yeah. of that. So the Rays will find a way to they be good. They always do. Um, they've, lost, they've lost a lot. McClanahan, they've gone through McClanahan's injuries. Wander Franco's situation, injuries to Springs, injuries to Rasmussen. It's just like, how do you keep winning ball games? But they do it. Yeah. And I think they're going to be good, not great, which again, I don't think cuts it in the American League East because there mm -mm. is some talent. There's a lot of talent. And your number two team got one of the biggest talents that was on the market, Juan Soto and the Yankees. Yeah, I had the Yankees. Um, I have them in second. They went 82 and 80 last year. I have them 10 games better this year. Not because Juan Soto adds 10 games to your team, but because they just remember Aaron Judge goes down, and once once that happened, the team really nose dive, yeah. dove, nose dove, nose, nose dive, a nose dive, nose dive. The team really nose dive. No, it's got to be Pat. What is it? Yeah. What's the past tense? <laughs> The team really took, they didn't do the team well. really took a nosedive. They took a tumble. Once Aaron Judge went down last year and hit his toe into the wall at Dodger Stadium. And then when he came back, he wasn't exactly he was still a really good ball player, but the team just was never able to really recover. Uh, he's going to be dealing with that toe thing, I think, for his the entirety of his career. But you add Soto, you add Stroman. I'm going to say you add Rodon because he didn't pitch for the longest time no. last year, and then he wasn't, he wasn't ready. Once he came back, it wasn't his typical self. He's looked really good. The later we get in spring training, he's throwing hard. He looks good. So you lose Garrett Cole. That's a big one for me. Um, he's going to be out for about 10 to 12 weeks, I hear. I, let's just call it the all-star break. Okay. I think that's probably fair at this point. Yikes. So the rotation is going to be struggling for a bit. You need Rodon to be really, really good. But that lineup with Soto and Judge, that is 
one, that is arguably the best one-two punch in baseball. And it's certainly the best one-two punch in, I'll, I'll say, the American League. Mm -hmm. And I do think it, it rivals what the Dodgers are doing out there with any way you want to word their one-two punch, whether you go Mookie Otani or Otani Freeman. This rivals that. That's how good they are. I'm high on Anthony Rizzo this year. I think Rizzo was concussed last year, and the Yankees just... Hey, well, just keep Didn't going. Didn't figure it out. Uh, I think he's going to have a good year. He's had a good spring. Okay. Uh, I think Volpe takes a step forward. So I like the Yankees this year. I do. I have them going 92 and 70. Okay, meaning you have the Orioles once again repeating winning the AL East. Yeah, I do think the Orioles win the division. I think all of their young studs uh, hopefully take a step forward. Yeah. Uh, and then you look at that rotation that added Corbin Burns. This is what I've been talking about for the Orioles for so long is you get the core and then you add around them and it's the same blueprint. Mike Elias did it with the Astros. You get that core up and then you add where you feel you need to add with a big time free agent or a big time trade. He did it in Houston with Justin. This is that same sort of move, right? The offense is there. The offense is ready. The rotation just needs a big stud in it. And mm -hmm. Corbin Burns is that guy. They did lose Kyle Bradish for a little while. Uh, news is honestly Pretty good about Kyle Bradish, but again, I think it was a strain in his UCL, but he's pitching through it. He's uh, throwing bullpens. He's looking really good by all accounts. Mike Elias has said both him and John Means should be back, quote, early on in the first half. Yeah. This rotation has the potential to be really, really good with Grayson Rodriguez back into the bullpen. Hopefully, Yanir Cano can be good. I, I do have some concerns with that back into the bullpen. Yanir Cano... Um, struggled in the second half a bit. Craig Kimbrell was a, an addition, and he doesn't give me any confidence when he comes into the game at this point in his career. Um, Felix Bautista is going to be out this season. He's one of the best closers in baseball and healthy. So there are some question marks, but I do really, really like this team. It is a bit frustrating, Alex. I want a Jackson I, Holiday. This was my question for you. You've been roster. raving about Jackson Holiday yeah. all offseason. Why do you think he did not make this opening day roster? Because he's so young. He is so young. But I don't think that's... I, if I were to really dive into why, yeah, the Orioles can say, we still just want to see him prove it a little bit in the minor leagues. I don't think so. He's proven it everywhere he's been. He proved it in spring training when he had a really good spring training. I think the main reason is, let's, let's call a spade a spade. This is service time manipulation with Jackson Holiday. It just is. They're okay. going to call him up after a couple weeks and save a year of service time for him, and there's, there's no way around it. There's just not. That's what the Orioles are doing here with Jackson Holiday. The dude deserved to be on that opening day roster. He really did. You're telling me you're going to go with Colton Wong over Jackson Holiday? Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. The dude deserved his spot. This is service time manipulation at its finest, and unfortunately, imagine there's so much hype going into this season for this team. Look, once again, at the top of the division, 97 and 65. They won 101 games last year. Oracle, I mean, Camden Yards is going to be popping yeah. to start the season. Opening day, you got the bird bath out there at Oriole Park, and the place would be rocking, and the lineup's going to be great. Imagine Jackson Holiday in that lineup when he gets announced on opening day. They robbed me of that. <laughs> they robbed him of that. They robbed the Orioles fans of that. And I'm downright pissed, but they're going to win the division. I feel like you're his PR agent over here. Yes. Get the guy a start. He should be. So yeah. frustrating. The I guy get it. looks like he's 15, yeah. but he should be on the <laughs> opening day roster. Alex, I will say okay. uh, the third and final, not third as in they're going to be the last of the wild card yeah. teams, but of my picks today, the third wild card team does come from this division for me. I think the Yankees get in. Mm -hmm. I think the Yankees are a wild card team this year. So the Orioles win the division. Yankees get in as a wild card. Alex, what say you? I had the exact same picks here. I have the Orioles now with the experience, now with a little chip on their shoulder after the way their season ended so abruptly in the postseason last year. I think come back out with that experience, adding a, be a veteran um, like Corbin Burns is exactly what they need to kind of get over that next hump and come back in with that fire is what you need. And then, yeah, I think with the Yankees, it, it is it is a big deal that they don't have the reigning oh, yeah. Cy Young winner, Garrett Cole, starting the season. That is a really big deal. But if Aaron Judge can stay healthy, if Juan Soto can get back to the Juan Soto that he was a couple years ago, 
we, we saw glimpses of it in San Diego when he was with the Padres, but if he can get back to the Juan Soto, that kind of just put him on the map. Yeah. The Yankees are going to be dangerous. I definitely think they're a playoff team, but I think Baltimore takes the division. I just hope, imagine getting to October and the Orioles are able to go Corbin Burns, Kyle Bradish, Grayson Rodriguez is a one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Then you're talking about a completely different feeling than yeah. I had this year coming into the playoffs with the three that they had. Uh, I think it's a completely different year. I think Corbin Burns is exactly what they needed. High on the Orioles this year, winning the AL East once again. Yep. That's that. That's our our American League preview show. All right. Tomorrow, we're going to do our National League preview. You also know what what happens and we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Shohei is speaking to the media for the first time since everything has gone down. Yeah. We're going to have everything you need to know, as promised. Yep. Everything you need to know throughout this situation will keep you updated. And mm-hmm. tomorrow, there will be a big update, including the National League preview, where we will do the same thing for the National League that we did with the American League today. So it's opening week, my friends. We have made it. Get keep excited. on following along, listening. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple or Spotify. We're also, you can watch everything. You can watch every episode on YouTube or on Spotify as well and follow us. Again, hit that follow button on TikTok. We're getting close to 100,000. We would love to see it get there, but we're creeping closer. We will see you all tomorrow for our National League preview. (laughs) Until then, my friends, remember, find your bat and flip it.